Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. This week, Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Gwede Mantashe reported that the long-awaited Integrated Resources Plan for Electricity would be approved within weeks. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what to expect. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the IRP and why is it so important? Well, the IRP is the Electricity Plan for South Africa. It's a forward-looking plan, in this case up to 2030. And it's built using assumptions of demand as well as technology costs. And it puts this together into a model that looks at how do we meet that demand reliably and cost effectively. And it comes out with results. And we know the integrated resource plan of 2018 was quite materially different from the, the current one that was approved in 2010, 2011. Basically saying that solar PV, wind and gas would be the least cost option. But then we also know that, uh, which is a major change from 2010 when coal was still the, the least cost for South Africa, and we still had a lot of nuclear in, in, the, in the plan. Uh, the 2018 plan doesn't cater for nuclear at all. And even the coal that it caters for uh, is, uh, raises the cost. Um, so it's a policy adjustment that's made. It raises the cost by about 52 billion rand. And the reason why it's included is that we had a bidding round for coal and uh, uh, two certain IPPs were chosen to build that, that coal. It hasn't actually materialized since 2015, but there seems to be a sort of contractual commitment, so it was included in the plan. And the other policy adjustment that was made to the 2018 plan was to include the Grand Inga, which is the outcome of a treaty between South Africa and the DRC. So. Uh, basically, this plan's important because unless it's in the RP, uh, it won't be procured. Uh, so, you know, we've got an RPP, uh, uh, RP, that we've got a determ ministerial determinations that flow that either allows ESKIM, the state-owned utility, to build, as it did with Madupi, Kusila and Angula, or independent power producers to build, and that's through a competitive bidding process. So unless it's catered for in the RP, it's not going to form part of those ministerial determinations and therefore there will be no procurement of that capacity. What will stakeholders be looking for once the final version is published? I think the, the, the main focus will be whether there have been further, further policy adjustments made beyond the coal and the Grand Inga, which already raised some eyebrows because, you know, in the context of South Africa's rising electricity tariffs, um, you know, the least cost option is what I think business in particular wants. South Africa, we don't want to have to pay more for electricity than we have to. And whether there are going to be further policy adjustments after a very long-winded process. This entered uh, NEDLAC, the Social Partners Government, Business and Labour, have been considering this plan over the last few months. Uh, there's been a lot of um, engagement there and also in society a lot of comments because the uh, NEDLAC process is confined to to specific partners, specific labor and community partners. It's not all in the labor community, um, but it is government and it's certain business organizations. And there has been a lot of discussion around what should be in the plan, particularly around nuclear, but also around coal and coal jobs in particular. I think there's concern that if we go for the least cost option, which is, as I mentioned, solar, PV, wind and gas, gas being used as a proxy for flexibility, flexible generation, so it doesn't have to be gas. It could be battery, sto uh, battery storage, for instance. It could be a hydro. It could be using the existing coal fleet more flexibly. But be that as it may, uh, what will happen to the coal industry and coal jobs, I think, has been a major focus. So th that's really going to be, I think, wh where the attention is given. When Cabinet considers this in the next couple of weeks, whether it makes further policy adjustments or sticks to the policy adjustments already announced in the 2018 plan and slightly adjusted. There have been adjustments made during the NEDLAC process. That document, while it's out in the public domain, hasn't really been officially released. So it, uh, we, we will have to see whether changes are made to that. But one of, the, one of the changes, which I think was a positive one, was to raise the amount of uh, annual capacity that will come from small-scale embedded generators. This is mostly solar PV rooftop, mostly on households and businesses and factories and mines to 500 megawatts a year, which is a, a scale up from 200 megawatts in the original plan. Um, and in the current RP, there's no 
doesn't cater for, for that at all. So it's very difficult for people to get licenses or, or register with NERSA for, um, for such projects. So there's going to be a lot of attention paid to what is in the final draft because that will then, then flow through, as I mentioned, to the ministerial determinations, which will eventually trigger procurement processes. What will happen after the final version of the RP is published? Well, the RPP office, which is a key player in this, uh, we know there's some flux there. This is a joint venture, really, between uh, the National Treasury, the Department of Energy, and the De Development Bank of Southern Africa. Um, they, that office is key to the procurement of the next uh, round of capacity. We know that Eskom's in a financial predicament and is unlikely to be able to be building new uh, power stations, no matter what form that takes. I know there's a, there seems to be some pressure that they should be the ones building renewables, but even renewables, it's going to be difficult given the amount of debt and uh, the fact that that utility is not on a sustainable footing for them to be building new capacity is unlikely. So therefore, what's really going to flow should be urgent procurement processes as we know, we entered a period of load shedding earlier this year. Um, there's real concern that we are entering potentially another phase of load shedding. And this is at a, an economy that's not growing at all. And the concern is if the economy does start turning up, this is going to be a constraint to future growth. So it's this terrible vicious circle where if confidence does return, investment does return, um, we, you know, we will start growing, but then there'll be a lid put on that growth because we don't have enough electricity. So what should flow is almost immediately determinations uh, from the Minister of en uh, Mineral Resources and Energy to, uh, outlining what will be procured, then for the IPP office to get that bid documentation uh, ready. And that bid documentation is going to change. We know we've had several uh, uh, renewables rounds and the process has been successful in driving down the cost of a, a renewable energy. And, but we also know that there's pressure to have greater South African ownership, greater black South African ownership in, in the RPPs, and greater South African and black South African participation in both the building and the operation of power stations, whether they're renewable or whether it's gas to power. There, there's that pressure. So I think that's going to be reflected somewhat in the new bid documentation. The new RPP office acting head, uh, Advocate Sandra Kutsia, has made it clear that she will engage with the stakeholders around that bid documentation. Because the worst case scenario is that we need this electricity, we need to get procurement going urgently, and then the bid documentation is so onerous that, uh, that there's no appetite to bid. So she has made a commitment to engage extensively with stakeholders to that these documents are what, what the community call, would call uh, bankable immediately so that we can get going with procurement, which is now urgent. And, you know, whatever's in the document, whatever's in the RP and whatever's in the determination, what, what really will probably be procured first would be solar and wind because those can be done fairly quickly and we know that there's appetite to do, build that. Anything else has got a very long lead time. So if we start uh, finalizing even coal procurement or gas to power, maybe not as much gas to power, but coal or nuclear, that's not, that capacity is not going to come on in the next uh, three to four years. It's more like five to ten years. Um, so we're really probably going to see the renewables uh, being the first uh, procurement to really flow and to flow fast once this RP is out the way. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.